is recognized. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank my friend and colleague, uh, Senator Lieberman, along with uh, Senator Graham, Senator Webb. We are uh, strongly supporting this amendment. Senator Lieberman made uh, reference to a letter that's currently been signed by 214 9-11 family members. And, Mr. President, I would ask unanimous consent that this letter be made part of the record, along with a article from the Wall Street Journal, October 19, 2009, entitled, Civilian Courts Are No Place to Try Terrorists by Michael B. Mukasey, the former Attorney General of the United States of America. Without objection. And uh, Order. I urge my colleagues who will be made aware of a letter from uh, Mr. Holder and Secretary Gates, who uh, uh, were urging defeat of this amendment, to look at the previous Attorney General of the United States views, which are diametrically opposed. Mr. President, the 9-11 families say, and I quote, and I'm sure they represent all of the 9-11 families, and I quote, we adamantly oppose prosecuting the 9-11 conspirators in Article III courts, which could, which could provide them, would provide them with the very rights that may make it possible for them to escape the justice which they so richly deserve. We believe that milita military commissions, which have a long and honorable history in this country dating back to the Revolutionary War, are the appropriate legal forum for the individuals who declared war on America with utter disdain for all the norms of decency and humanity, and in defiance of the laws of warfare accepted by all civilized nations, these individuals targeted tens of thousands of civilian non-combatants, brutally killing 3,000 men, women, and children, injuring thousands more, and terrorizing millions. That's the view of the of those who were directly, I've been under question from the senator from Illinois. Uh, I thank the senator from Arizona, and I'd ask the senator if he'd be kind enough for ask, to ask for unanimous consent that I could follow him at speaking after his remarks. As unanimous consent, the senator from Illinois follow. Without objection, so ordered. Anyway, Mr. President, uh, these are the 9/11 families. These are the all Americans were impacted by 9/11. The 9/11 families in the most tragic uh, fashion. Uh, this is a very strong letter from them concerning the strong desire that they not these criminals not be these 9/11 conspirators not be tried in Article III courts, but uh, be tried according to the military commissions. Um, with the 9/11 victims experience an act of war against the United States carried out not on some distant shore, but in our communities on the very symbols of our national power, because it involved attacks on innocent civilians and innocent civilian targets. It is a war crime. It is a war crime that was committed by the 9-11 terrorists. It's important that we call things what they are and not gloss over the essence of these events, even though they occurred eight years ago. In response to the attacks, Congress quickly and overwhelmingly passed the authorization for the use of military force, giving the President the authority to use all necessary and appropriate force against those nations, organizations, or persons he determines planned, authorized, committed, or aided the terrorist attacks that occurred on September 11, 2001. The Senate passed this legislation unanimously. The authorization for the use of military force recognized the true nature of these attacks and committed the entire resources of the United States to our self-defense in light of the grave threat to our national security and foreign policy. The United States does not go to war over a domestic criminal act, nor should it. It was clearly understood at that time that far more was at stake. We sent our sons and daughters off to war where they've been bravely risking their lives and futures on our behalf for the last eight years. Given the facts and history of the 9-11 attacks, we should not deal with the treachery and barbarism of the slaughter of thousands of innocent civilians as a matter of law enforcement in the ordinary sense. To do so would belittle the events that transpired, the symbolism and purpose of the attacks, the huge number of lives that were lost, and the threat posed to the United States, which continues in the caves and sanctuaries of Al-Qaeda to this day. 
During my life, I've been a warrior, although that seems a long time ago now. I have some experience in the reality of combat and the suffering it brings. I know something of the law of war, having fought constrained by it, and having lived through, with the help of my comrades and my faith, times when my former enemy felt unconstrained by it. No, the attacks of 9-11 were not a crime. They were a war crime. Together with my colleagues in Congress, I've worked closely with the President to provide a means to address war crimes committed against this country in a war crimes tribunal, the Military Commissions Act of 2009. It was designed specifically for this purpose. It should be used not to mete out a guilty verdict and sentence that could not be achieved in federal criminal court, but to call things what they are, to be unshakable in our resolve to respond to the unprecedented acts of 9-11 consistent with the authorization for use of military force, and to tell this and any future enemy that when they attack our innocent civilians at home, we won't be sending the police after them to make an arrest. By denying funds to the Department of Justice to prosecute these horrendous crimes in Article III courts, I do not mean that these outrages against our country and its citizens should go unpunished. In fact, I've long argued that justice in these cases was long overdue and that prosecutions should be pursued as expeditiously as possible. Rather, my support for this amendment is based on my unshakable view that these events were acts of war and war crimes, and that the proper forum for bringing the war criminals to justice is a military tribunal consistent with longstanding traditions in this country that date back to George Washington's Continental Army during the founding of the Republic. For that reason, I urge my colleagues to support this amendment so that the prosecution of war crimes will take place in the traditional and long accepted forum of the military tribunal as the Congress overwhelmingly enacted in 2006, which the National Defense Authorization Act for 2010 amended and improved in a statute that was enacted into law by President Obama just days ago. Again, Mr. President, I hope that we will, as we have in the past, listen to the families of 9-11, from the trauma and, and, and sorrow of the tragedy that, that they experienced and the loss of their families, they became a force. They became a force that without them, we would have never had the 9-11 Commission. We would have never been able to make the reforms that arguably has made our nation much safer. Now today, the families are standing up and saying, try these war criminals according to war crimes which they committed, the heinous acts of 9-11, which I know that Americans will never forget. Mr. President, I hope we will vote in favor of the amendment, and I yield the floor.